Hey everybody, welcome to Grand TMT's reaction videos. Um, today I'm going to do something that I promised you guys a while back that I would do. I'm going to talk to you about my journey. Um, I almost, uh, almost died. And um, as y'all could see earlier when my sisters were talking to you, and um, I just want to talk about this because it's very, um, it's helping me to get over uh, what has happened to me since March of 2023. And um, getting this out and uh, talking about it is very, very helpful to me. So I hope you guys listen to it. And um, uh, if you like what's going on here at Grand Tam T Reacting Videos, you can go below and hit like, subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell each time a video is uploaded. You'll be notified of that. And go to the comment section. Let me know how you feel about what's going on here. Well, <clears throat> okay. On uh, March the 11th of this year, 2023, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, as you all know, because I made a video about it. Was scared, but... Um, had a lot of faith that it was going to turn out okay, and um, it did for a while. And then um, the cancer was removed, and um, I went uh, July the 7th, oh no, July the 11th, I'm sorry, and I had my first chemo treatment. Uh, the day after that, everything went downhill. Um, by the 23rd, my, um, I started hemorrhaging from my nose and um, was uh, vomiting up blood. The first hospital I went to said that I was dehydrated and that my potassium was low and that was what was causing me to do that. So they gave me, my husband, a, I don't remember any of this, they gave my husband a um, prescription for potassium and um, uh, something to keep my head from hurting because I was bleeding from my nose and they sent me home. By the time that my husband pulled up into the driveway, I was completely out of it. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know um, what was going on. Uh, everything went black for me. So he called a, an ambulance, a squad, and they took me to another hospital. By the time they got me there, uh, my husband uh, was there, and he was watching them as they were bringing me in out of the back of the ambulance, and they were giving me CPR. They shot me twice and then brought me back. But later on, as they were running their tests and everything, and like I said, I don't remember any of this, um, they found out that I had double pneumonia. And I was literally drowning in my own fluid. So what they did was, uh, first they put a chest tube in me, and then they put me on a ventilator. But before the ventilator uh, happened, the doctor came to my husband and said, I want you to sign this paper. And my husband said, what, you know, what kind of paper is that? He said, well, it's a paper that is going to we're going to let your wife go. Um, she's not going to make it. Uh, even if she did make it, she will never be able to uh, think on her own. She'll never be able to walk, talk, or be, you'll always have to have assistance with her or put her into a nursing home. And uh, my husband was looking at the monitors that they had me on. He said, wait a minute, she's still, her heart's still beating. You haven't said anything about her brain being dead. Uh, I'm not signing your paper. So the doctor turned and he left. And a few minutes later, a nurse comes out with that paper. And she says, um, we're giving you five minutes to be with your wife. And then we're going to let her go. And you have to sign this paper. Well, my husband is not a violent man. Any of you that know Tim know that he does not anger easily. He picked up a chair and asked that cowardly doctor to come outside where he was at. 
and he threw the chair. He didn't hit anybody, thank goodness, but it took his mom and his dad both to pull him back away from going after that doctor. I say this because, um, look at me today. I'm living, I'm breathing. I do have a brain that I can talk. I can walk. I can use my hands. And I'm just as sane as I was whenever I first got sick. But the journey after that was very hard. And it was very long because I laid for 62 days in the hospital. The majority of that was in ICU. My family was called in. Uh, my son from West Virginia, all of my sisters and my brother and family members of my husband's, his brother, his sister, they were all called in to uh, say goodbye to me. And um, each day I kept <laughs> surprising them. I was living another day. So anyway, they moved me after they took me off the ventilator. I was able to breathe on my own. Uh, they sent me to another hospital. And in that hospital began therapy. And because I had laid so long, I had developed atherpy, which I could not do anything but shake. My hands, I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't walk at all at that time. And um, I was still disoriented. I mean, I, I, people would tell me things and then, you know, five or 10 minutes later, I'd ask a question and they'd answer it again. But um, it was very, very hard. And um, I know that we all in our lives, we go through challenges and we go through things that um, are very, very stressful. And But this was something that um, in the process of it, I got lost. Um, from the chemo, I lost my hair. Um, that, when I was able to look at myself in the mirror, able to sit up by this time, the therapy, they were setting me up, and finally I wanted a mirror. And, um, I looked in that mirror, and I could not believe the person I was looking at I went from 141 pounds down to 106. And as you can tell by my voice now, it's still not back to normal. Um, I was barely able to speak. I had no hair. I didn't know who I was looking at in the mirror. I had no idea. And that day, I got lost. I got very lost. And, um... I hope that someone that sees this will find some kind of encouragement because I'm not supposed to be here. But by the grace of our greater God, I'm going to say, and my husband, Tim, I will never, ever be more grateful to another human being the way that I've been. I'm grateful to him because he would not sign that paper for them to let me go. He just absolutely would not. Um, my family has told me that it devastated him. And in a roundabout way, I think that I'm glad I didn't see that part because I can't imagine what he went through. Um, watching me sleeping on the couch beside of me to make sure I was okay for all that time. Uh, he still, he, he would get up and he'd go to work in the mornings, and but he was right back there at night. This is after they moved me and stabilized me, though. Before that, he would not leave my side. He slept on a couch beside of me. <coughs> I am so grateful that... The person that was put in my path, Tim, uh, loved me so much that he absolutely refused to let me go. Um, I've had a lot of people, a lot of women, that came up to me after that and said, 
Kimmy. Um, I'm not so sure that my husband would have done that. You are a very lucky woman, and I know I am. I'm very, very fortunate. And he's got my videos on his phone. And he went around to anybody and everybody that would watch and say, this is my wife. The person laying there is my wife, but this is what she did. She's a valuable person, and she's still valuable to me. And um, he just refused. He refused to believe that I was not going to be here anymore. And uh, that must have been hard for him as well. My family, they were devastated, of course. And, um, but even now, he's very, <laughs> but he's very protective. Uh, he calls me, are you doing okay? How are you today? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And he, he watches to see if I am posting videos. And it makes him happy that I'm up and around and I'm doing things. And um, after I got home from on September 25th, I ended up back in the hospital uh, in Atlanta. And at that time, I was only there six days. So it was just, you know, precautions that had to be taken and things that had happened while I was in the hospital. Uh, they dealt with those uh, and, and so did I because it was therapy for me. But um, I just want to be an encouragement to someone out there that may be watching this, that it's not always a death sentence. Um, I had no idea when I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer that it was gonna get like that. It was gonna be like that. I uh, thought I was gonna be okay. I had already set myself up to the chemo, radiation, and said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be all right. Uh, I may be, you know, a little sick from it or whatever, but I never in a million years ever, ever thought that it would go to the extreme that it did. But I'm here today, and I know there are a lot of people out there that are not as fortunate as I have been. And I pray for you each and every day. Believe that. I do. Because the struggles are long. The struggles are hard. And um, I guess I'm pretty strong. <laughs> because I've been told by. Um, I have five different doctors. And. Um, they didn't think I was going to make it. They kept. Doing things and kept you know, switching things up and doing things, I had a chest tube in me. Let me tell you, <laughs> when they took that chest tube out, they don't numb you. They don't, uh, they don't do anything. They just pull that out. And of course, I've got scars, but you know what? Those are my battle scars. Those are scars that tell a story. And um, I am fortunate that those scars are there because they tell the story of Tam. And um, I uh, also lost uh, some of my lung uh, with the pneumonia, I got necropathy. So they had to cut open my lung, my right lung, and they took out some of that. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot, it is, but you know what? I am grateful today, and I am so happy that I'm able to do this for people, and I hope each and every one of you are encouraged in some way, shape, or form by my story, and that uh, you will uh, find some solace in that, and um, I'll continue doing this. And uh, I hope you guys keep watching. I hope you keep um, uh, subscribing to my channel. And um, I love each and every one of you. I do. And um, 
faith is what we have to live by each and every day and blessings from those that love us and refuse to give up on us like my husband. I'm grateful for him each and every day. I'm going to do a song a little later um, after I finish this. It's called The Flame and it's by Cheap Trick. And I hope you guys listen to that because um, this song means a lot to me and it reminds me of Jim. So um, I'm going to do some more videos today. I hope you guys will stick around and listen and I will see you all in just a bit. Love you. See ya.